How's it going everybody? Jeff Chrysler here, a detail enthusiast and owner of Rightway Heritage Trimming. And here we are with your second installment of trimming a BN2. So she's all finished. The owner's coming to pick her up today. But uh, in this video, we'll be showing you installing all of the weather equipment, uh, the top and tonneau cover and side screens, and of course, trimming all the interior of the boot. So let's get into it. We'll show you how it's done. Okay, so trimming the boot. Sorry, I got a little ahead of myself and got started. Um, but I'll show you the order of operation. Of course, the boot is all trimmed in armicord pieces. Um, and it's all just glued to the bare steel. Uh, so pretty simple, but there is an order that these things have to go in here. So uh, first pieces I always start with are the two side wheel arches. So it's a sewn assembly here. So it's all of this going up there. Put those in first, both left and right. And on the right hand side, you're gonna have to, uh, I always just use like a broom handle or something to temporarily hold the boot lid open. You have to unbolt that and then put in that uh, rear wheel arch cover and then uh, locate the holes from the, from the backside through the wheel arch and uh, poke them through and then reinstall the wood block with its bolts and uh, the prop rod. So once that those pieces are in, you can follow with the rear sections here, which just cover the edge there and butt up to them and it just trims down there. And then again, once these rear sides are done on both sides, then you can put the, uh, the lower floor sections, which just go in there. And uh, they have like a little cutout here that goes around the uh, frame members there. And again, in the back here, if you can see in the dark, it cuts around where the bumper would go through there. You can see he's got those little caps installed. So if he ever decides to put bumpers on, you can just pull those caps out easily. And uh, so yeah, that basically gets both sides taken care of. And then once you get both sides that far, then you can start doing some of this upper area. Uh, of course, this is the piece that I had pre-installed that has the spare wheel uh, cover sewn to it. So I had just glued the front edge there and then left the, rep with the rest hanging so I could fold it up to install these wheel arches. And then, uh, and then I put this one in next, and it's a two-sided piece that's sewn together in the middle. So I usually get this side located first and then wrap it around and put it in. That was a heck of a job trying to get it in around his uh, custom fuel feeler there, but we got her in. And um, yeah, and then you can finally glue this floor piece down and it has this sewn piece of vinyl that wraps around that front edge. And then again, finishing off in the box here, there's a back wall section there, you can hardly see it. Um, and then there's a floor section I have yet to set in that has a little cutout for the battery cutoff switch. And then, so next I'm just getting ready to install this uh, rear bulkhead section that's gonna go along there. Um, normally it has a little more material coming down here that tucks in behind the gas tank, but he's got his so far forward I can't even fit material in there, so I'm just going to cut it so that it kind of floats down onto the gas tank and onto here. Um, so, and now I've got to locate these new holes, which are non-standard holes, but I mean there are the standard holes, he's just covered them up with uh, grommets and I have those marked in chalk on the ones that I supply, you can see here. So I can just wipe that chalk away and make a new hole for his vent there. And here we are, the finished boot. So the only remaining pieces that I added is this uh, back rear bulkhead uh, section, which I had to uh, carefully uh, cut a little hole around that guy. Not original hole, but uh, similar to what the originals did. You just cut a straight line up and punch out the hole wherever it is. Um, and then here's the main boot mat, which again, I had to do, followed the original pattern, sort of just using the outside basis, but instead of having the fuel filler here, I left that uh, solid and cut out around all of this apparatus bound around that so that's a non-standard cover but very similar to the standard cover 
um, yeah, so that's your finished boot. All hundreds, BN1s and 2s had a color matching uh, boot armacord to the rest of the interior. In fact, uh, early BN4s also had color matching boots as well. Um, but as soon as they moved to Longbridge, or to Abingdon from Longbridge, they went with all black boot interiors from then on. And of course, don't forget, there is that spare wheel block mounted up in the corner there. And it uh, holds the that side of the spare wheel bag, um, which is also tucked underneath the edge of that wheel arch cover. So it all ties it together and prevents the spare wheel from being pushed too far into the cabin. A uh, couple little final details. I, there's the spare wheel strap and bracket. So once the wheel goes in, that kind of hooks into the front, into the spokes. You can tie it down tight with that strap. Um, of course up here, you've got your tool kit and jack. I've just laid his tonneau cover in here. And of course, side screens and side screen bag. Um, and of course, no, uh, Healy 100 boot would be complete without its complete tool kit, which uh, we supplied the bag. That's a Concour Spec bag and this original super thin, almost oil cloth vinyl. And uh, I'm exactly as original. It's got the little extra pockets for your uh, smaller tools. So. And that, you also have a jack bag and a jack handles bag normally. Um, and then, of course, your side screen bag. So the tools and jack and handles bag were always done in black vinyl, but the side screen bag was always done to match the interior. So, and then, of course, your tonneau cover there. So, Healy 100s came well equipped for everything you need. And, uh, as the Healy Mark evolved, you got less and less accessories uh, included, and the tool kit, you know, ended up just a few tools by the end. So here is the jack and handles bag, just to show you what they look like. These would be included with the uh, tool kit for any Austin Healy 100. So, and these jack bags, so well, the handles came in two different lengths over the years. So uh, when you order these, you got to specify long or short. Uh, handles bag. So one more thing I wanted to show you is just how these uh, aluminum uh, trim panels fit in the door openings. After all your carpet is installed you can put these lower floor ones in because they overlap the edge of carpet there and hold it down. And uh, they use these little uh, round head uh, like number four Phillips trim screws. You gotta be really careful with the drilling because Obviously you're going through thick steel on those sills and door posts. And, uh, and then notice this uh, trim piping uh, on BN1s and 2s and early Longbridge BN4s even, it was generally done to match the body color uh, to be as the least noticeable and uh, as possible. So Healy Blue, it's this light blue-gray color. And uh, later cars like Abingdon built uh, Healy's were all done in black, uh, no matter what the body color. So that's how those finish and it neatly tucks in there uh, with the cockpit rail overlapping it. And that's how that finishes. Okay, and here we go with the tonneau cover. So. This is one of our English Everflex tonneau covers uh, with a hand-rolled binding installed with a uh, proper uh, lightning zipper, uh, as you can see right there, just like the originals had. So, um, uh, methods for uh, installing a tonneau cover. Um, of course, obviously, you start with uh, anchoring these guys in the back, because those are a set location, and the tonneau cover comes with those little metal bars sewn into it. Uh, as you can see, I had to do a little modification on this one to go around his fuel filler there, but uh, that was no problem. And uh, so with those anchors in the back, the first snap I always install is the front center. So you get things all aligned center. Then once that one's done, then I do the two front corners, uh, which are turn snaps on a BN2. Uh, early BN1s had uh, another 10X snap in those corners. Um, and, then, uh, and then just work your way 
uh, at the rear, I do side to side and put in those turn snaps that are under there and then, uh, and then do the snaps going from the rear. And then you're done. Uh, sometimes it's an issue with the uh, lining up of the steering wheel when people have a custom steering wheel and or custom column, so I was a little nervous about that, but uh, this is where it should be, so that's great. So there you go, right way here it is trimming tonneau cover. So first steps when installing a Healy top, obviously you install the top frame, um, make sure you prop it up correctly. Uh, locking all the points in place, like uh, right there has to snap fully in place and uh, those rear parallel rails where they come up from the mounting brackets need to be tight and parallel. Um, and then, and yeah, when you lock it in place, it should extend all the way up and just over the windscreen. Um, and then of course you've got to install, there's a a wood trim piece in here that screws to the metal frame from the bottom and once that wood trim piece is installed to the metal frame then you wrap the entire thing the wood and the steel front header bar as one piece um, and most cars were all done in matching Everflex to the topping material early BN ones only uh, this inner part was trimmed separately in matching vinyl to the interior so we found that, uh, like for example, persimmon cars had a red Everflex top with a persimmon trimmed inner header rail. So you saw that color on the inside. But yeah, like I say, most cars were done in the same Everflex as the top, this being at the end too, that's correct for this. Um, so once that's on and you can temporarily install these latch brackets and lock it all in place. So the frame is nice and rigid and attached to the front windscreen. Obviously, uh, until the rubber seal is in there, make sure you use lots of tape to protect the windscreen. You don't want to scratch paint or chrome. And then, uh, then you can go about installing the top itself. Um, I always leave this bow loose for much of it. Uh, you can attach the webbing straps to it. Uh, well, depending on what series you're doing, sometimes they're sewn to the top, sometimes they're just attached to the uh, bow, um, but uh, yeah, this one, I just let them hang long and then I'll pull them forward later once I know where that bow exactly needs to be. So yeah, to install the top, first thing you do, put the anchor bar in the rear, hook it into those hooks, and then pull it all forward and then get this, these front corners set. You want that to be right up tight against the windscreen to prevent as much water and wind as you can from going in there. So a little bit tight is good. And then you can, once you get it pulled there, you can mark your holes, remove the brackets and poke them through the actual top and put them back on. And uh, so you get those front corners set. Once you get those front corners set, this should naturally line up this st stitch line onto the main bow and then you can pull this bow forward wherever it needs to go to line up to that stitch line. And once you get that established, you can pull the webbing straps through the front here and staple them off so that that is all where it should be. And then once you get that to that point, you can uh, start installing the snaps. I usually start with these rear ones and work my way forward. You do those ones and of course the ones down on the inside that uh, and that gives you a nice tight fit. So here you can see how these front corners are done. You just uh, you pull the topping forward, put a couple staples in it, and then cut this and so that you can wrap it around, pulling this tight around. That's how they were done. So you get that little folded corner. And then once, all the, once you've got all your topping pulled forward and you've pulled all the wrinkles out of it, then you can go along with your scissors and cut it off even, and then put your hide-em strip on to cover all your staples with the little hide-em tips on the end. And then usually, final step I usually like to do is to steam it. And I just use like a little 
wallpaper steamer like that. And uh, just get it up to temperature and steam it from the inside and it'll get any final wrinkles out. So I could use a bit more steam along this bottom part just to get those little guys. But yeah, there's an Austin Healy 100 top. So another final addition is just fitting the side screens. So these are uh, not ones that right way heritage trimming supplies, although we do uh, supply new side screens that we can uh, restore and rebuild with your original frames and original chromes. Um, however, these ones are new from AH Spares. Um, and they make a pretty good pair. They only offer this, uh, the later Style 3. So uh, if you need the earlier style too, then we're your best option. But uh, yeah, these just peg into the tops of the doors. Um, and then uh, uh, unless you're in the car, you need to leave that strap open so that you can, when the door is closed, you can lift up this flap to work the door handle. Um, but yeah, once you're in the car and doors closed, you can pull that strap and it just snaps into the top of the door here. You got a little 10x snap there. And yeah, you can pull that tight and you're fairly well enclosed. And of course, these upper flaps uh, with a little aluminum tab originally that's in them, you can shape those to be a better fit and seal around the top of the side screen. So there are your side screens. And of course, with it closed, it just tucks under that edge, so you get a pretty decent seal there, too. So there you have it, the fully trimmed Austin Healey BN2, complete with all weather equipment installed. Um, looking really good. So once he finishes off with the last of his lights and grill and odds and ends like that, he'll be ready for the road. So until next time, I'm Jeff Chrysler, a detail enthusiast and owner of Rightway Heritage Trimming. Bye bye for now.